How do? Fancy making a five string multi laminate neck through multi scale headless bass? Yeah, me too! Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations. Yes, I think there's a kitchen sink coming soon as well. Uh, we're going to make a bass completely from scratch multi laminate neck through multi scale headless bass. Uh, we're really trying to throw everything we can at this one. Um, the laminate part of this neck through base is going to be predominantly oak with a maple strip up the middle. So it will look a little bit like that. Uh, and that's going to go obviously then all the way through. So we're going to get rid of the headstock. Uh, we've got some headless bridge stuff to put on as well. Um, and we've got to make sure that they fit the great big fat B string of a five string bass. It's also going to have a little bit of carving, some shosugiban burning stuff going on in there, and some resin and a bit of black and a bit of gold and a bit of bling. Oh, it's gonna be marvelous. So make sure you click the subscription and ring that little notification bell thingamajig to make sure you get all the videos in this series because we're not gonna get it all done today. But let's see if we can get that neck through, cut out, laminated together, ready to start building around it. This is what the base is going to look like. So nicely shaped off, uh, neck through all the way up to a headless top. So what we're interested in for this laminate section is actually this profile at the bottom here. So what I'm gonna do is cut that out um, and then stick that onto this beautiful plank of oak. And then we've got some maple sticks over there that we can put in the middle. You'll have to excuse the foofy workshop. There's always too much going on. Uh, but that is the first challenge. Cut out that neck profile and then we can stick them all together. Now that's satisfying. Planning top tip. Firstly, just do it because it's awesome. Uh, but when you have a board like this, you can see I've marked off one on here and one on this side. And they're opposing directions. So that's the head of the base. The body of the base is here. On the opposite side, I've done it the other way around, quite on purpose, and this is why. When you plane one edge of a board, and then you want to play in the other edge of the board, don't turn it that way. Because then the plane orientation will be wrong for the grain of the wood. If you turn it this way, you will be able to work in exactly the same direction and the wood will work with you. You're not going to be fighting against the grain. So where I was pulling with the plane on that occasion, I should be able to do exactly the same again on this occasion. Ta -da! And anyone tells you that you're only allowed to push a plane, ignore them. So with checking for grain orientation, that means when I glue these three pieces together, I'm going to be able to plane all in one direction. I'm not going to have one of these three pieces of wood fighting against me going in the wrong direction. It's going to make that planing for putting fretboard material on the top and anything else that needs to be done. It needs to be flat and using the plane is now an accessible option. Time to cut these out. I'm going to use my little bandsaw, it's just a hobby thing. You could just use a handheld jigsaw, it honestly doesn't matter which tool you use, as long as it does the job. Oh, 
Ugh. on it so we have these cut out pieces three of these Woo uh, and we need to stick them together. Now, because these are really long, I am gonna put something in the glue joint to make sure that they don't slip and slide as we're clamping them together. Um, all I'm gonna do, dead simple, I'm going to use some cocktail sticks, drill a few holes. Um, I know so, there's this thing about using salt at the moment, but I don't wanna try that out on a customer's base. So I'm gonna stick with the tried and chested. Now what I am going to do before putting the holes in anywhere is mark off where those cocktail stitch realistically need to go. I want to guarantee as I carve this neck out and do anything that's necessary with it, I'm not going to reveal any of those cocktail sticks poking out the side because that's going to look hideous. So uh, let's put this uh, together, mark it off using the plan that I've got um, and make sure we can put it in nice safe places that's never ever going to be seen. Right, so you can say I have all of my clamps at the ready. Um, now, because this is so long, I actually don't have enough clamps to do it all. So I'm going to put most of the body in the vise when I clamp this up for gluing. Nothing wrong with using your bench vise as a glue thing. Why a base is so long? They're massive, aren't they? Run that through. Please be long enough. Yes, it is. <laughs> You know you've measured things out a million times, but you still don't quite trust it's going to work until it actually lays out. Uh, right, so centre line on there is fine. What have I got underneath? Uh, that doesn't look brilliant. I can move that up there a little bit. Now, um, plenty of room at that end as well. Okay. Right, so here's the thing. I was going to run this edge flush, but this is a multi-scale base, so everything is wonky. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move those across like that a little bit. Doing that will make this under curve here uh, fit a little bit better all the way across. Uh, so that's gonna work quite nicely. So now when we put this on, all the slopes that we have across here will work a little bit better on the end of here. Still gives me a bit more extension on the end if I want to make the headstock a little bit longer. That also means I've got space underneath for this section here. For now, I can just say, put through there, left a mark on that section. That's where I can put one of the pins quite confidently. Let's put another one there, and we'll put another one here, just before the fretboard ends. Now the last pin I'm gonna put somewhere on the pickup, not on the bridge section. The, the individual bridge saddles that are going to sit here uh, are going to be sunken in, I fully suspect. So I'm gonna keep away from that. I'll put the last pin here, roughly where the pickup's gonna go. And then hopefully all of those should never be seen ever again. Now with each of these markings, I'll then go across all three pieces that way I know exactly where that and that and that need to sit in relation that way on and then just perfectly flush across the top and then I know all of these pieces are in exactly the right place. So with these holes drilled uh, nice and perpendicular using the pillar drill just to guarantee it I can then just use that as the pilot hole run through into the second layer I put a little bit of masking tape on because I only just want to go into here. I'm not going deep at all, just enough to poke a stick in. So you can see there we've got uh, five or six mil depth at the most, probably five. That'll do. Move on to the next one. Do that all the way along and then flip it over and do the same on the second piece. Uh, so the 2mm hole allows me to just push the cocktail stick in. It's a fairly snug fit to begin with. I am just going to put on a tiny little bit of super glue just before I push that last section in. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I clamp these together, I don't want this stick to move so that it's not sticking into both sides. I want that to be guaranteed it's not going to move around. 
and then I'm going to snip them again relatively close a shorter distance than we had for the holes in the sides that we drilled and now for the glue not the scary bit at all well maybe a little Sure, many of you will frown that I'm using my finger. It's only glue, it will wash off. Moment of truth. Woo. Hurrah! The holes line up. Right, next one. I always feel like I'm under massive time constraints doing this. Uh, but of course, glue takes. Well, at least half an hour to really, really start to stick. So we've got plenty of time to get this in the clamps. Oh, now to clamp. Huzzah! And with that, it's time for some lunch. And with that, we have a through neck. Um, the next thing is then to sort out truss rods, fret boards, etc, etc. But I'm not going to do that now. I want to leave this to see if it does anything funky. Uh, is it going to twist? Is it going to warp or bend or do anything weird? chopping off all of this excess. Have I learned anything through this process? Do you know what? Yeah. I thought I'd try this system of cutting this out before gluing it together. I've seen other people do it and I thought, oh, that seems like a good idea. Might save a load of time later on. I don't think I'm going to do it again though. And the reason is, it means that this is unsupported. So as I work on this area, I usually, with all of my necks, sort out fretboards and everything else while it's glued onto the neck and has a full solid base underneath that can sit on a bench and it's not going to move and wobble. This is going to be a little bit trickier. I can clamp this down but then I'm going to have to put something under here to brace it to make sure it doesn't bend and move around. So just as a, a side note we'll see how that works later on um, as to whether it's been a brilliant idea or not we'll find out soon. Make sure you click the subscription button to catch all the rest of this series. It's all coming up soon. And until then, sharpen your tools, and I'll see you soon. God bless.